Good morning, welcome, and happy Father's Day. In case you have not met me yet, I'm Jerry Reed Burkholder. I am Barry's wife and a retired United Methodist pastor. About um, two weeks ago, I offered Barry to cut his hair and trim his beard for him. And um, since then, the barbershops were closed. He rolled his eyes at me, can you believe that? And said, no, he'd wait. Well, that really blew my plans of doing something for him for Father's Day. So I thought about it a little bit, and I said, well, would you like me to preach for you on Father's Day? Well, for better or worse, he said yes. And so today, you have me bringing the morning's message. Today is Father's Day. And Father's Day is the day that we celebrate our fathers and the men who have been like fathers in our lives. And so to men and women alike, I say to you, Happy Father's Day. Other announcements that we have include a uh, reminder that Fletcher's Chapel's Health Church Committee continues to believe the safest worship setting for us will be in stage three. And we look forward to a time when we can come and we'll be able to worship safely and be able to express our spirit-filled love of God and one another. Now Barry and I will be going on vacation and we will be coming back this coming Saturday. If there is a need for pastoral support, the pastor of New Hope United Methodist Church, Robin B. Miller, uh, will be covering for Barry. Information for contacting Reverend B. Miller will be Fletcher's Chapel's website and what you need to know to contact her will be there for you. The final announcement that I have um, has to do with something that Barry has planned uh, for sometime in July, and it is a Bible study on the book of Mark. And so he is waiting anxiously for people to call and let him know that they would just love to have an opportunity to be a part of this Bible study. They're going to do it via Zoom, but don't let that scare you. Um, I think if I can handle Zoom uh, without um, any major disaster to my phone or my computer, I think just about anybody can. So let Barry know if you would like to be a part of this Bible study. He is uh, looking forward to hearing from everyone. Unless Barry has some other announcements, and I don't think he does, then let us prepare for worship. virus, loss, calls for justice and violence. O oh God, hear our sighs. We stop in the midst of our lives with stories of our own regret, fear, and anxiety, perhaps simply asking why. O oh God, hear our sighs. We call out to you, the one who holds our lives in powerful and loving hands. O oh God, hear our sighs. Our first hymn of the morning is number 92, if you have a United Methodist hymn. It is entitled For the Beauty of the Earth, and we will be singing the first and the fourth verses.
Would you pray with me our opening prayer of the morning? Creator God, we thank you and praise you for the many gifts of your creation, for sun and moon, water and sky, stars in the heavens and creatures on the earth. We thank and praise you for entrusting us to be your special creation, made in your image, given responsibility for this magnificent earth. As we worship this day, open our hearts and minds to ourselves as caretakers and stewards of this earth. Help us see where we may walk more gently and live more compassionately, that all of your earth might find in us your very image, nurturing and caring in all that we do. In Christ we pray. Amen. And hear these words of the psalmist as they were recorded in the 20th Psalm. I pray that the Lord answers you whenever you are in trouble. Let the name of Jacob's God protect you. Let God send help to you from the sanctuary and support you from Zion. Let God recall your many grain offerings. Let him savor your entirely burned offerings. Let God grant what is in your heart and fulfill all your plans. Then we will rejoice that you have been helped. We will fly our flags in the name of our God. Let the Lord fulfill all your requests. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed one. God answers his anointed one from the heavenly sanctuary, answering with mighty acts of salvation achieved by his strong hand. Some people trust in chariots, others in horses, but we praise the Lord's name. They will collapse and fall, but we will stand up straight and strong. Lord, say the king, let him answer us when we cry out. It's good that we affirm our faith together. Let us do that by reciting our traditional Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our next hymn of the morning is number 408, Gift of Love.
loving God, our Creator. We gather each in our own places of spiritual centeredness, thankful for your presence in our lives and the ways we are reminded of your presence with us each and every day. We are thankful in these times of social distancing that there are still opportunities to be connected with one another. We are thankful not only for the challenge of being creative to find different ways to see, to hear, and or to be present with one another. But we pray that those new ways of seeing, hearing, and being with your children bring new insights of those we know and love, that we may more faithfully serve you and each other in life-changing ways. On this Father's Day, as we find ways to celebrate the fathers and the men who have been like fathers in our lives, we are thankful to you, God our Heavenly Father, for our purest example from you of what it means to be a loving parent. We thank you, Creator God, for designing us as persons in need of others in our lives to take care of us and teach us what it means to be human as Christians, with Christian fathers and Christian men in our lives. We thank you for their witness, for their mentoring us in ways that lead to life eternal. We treasure the memories of those men no longer with us. We seek your loving grace to flow over those with whom we are blessed to share this day. We seek healing and forgiveness for those we have disappointed or have disappointed us. And we pray for your comforting presence with those who are separated from their children, either through death or family discord. You are a God of extravagance. You love us dearly, even though we have trouble loving ourselves and others. You call us to bold, historic, changing acts, even though we are timid. You move outside our social rules and norms and beckon us to follow, even though we're easily embarrassed. Remind us anew of your love that frees us from isolation, fear, and shame. Show us once more that you give us power to defeat evil when we stand up with courage for what is right. Be with us today, and do not let us forget. Now let us join our voices as one as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples so very long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In a traditional service, this would be the time when we would receive our tithes and offerings for the morning. And although we are scattered, the opportunity for us to return a portion of what God gives to us back to God for the work of the church is available to us by simply mailing our offerings either to Marie or by mailing them to Fletcher's Chapel Church. Through our apportionments, the mission work of the United Methodist Church faithfully continues in our own district, conference, and around the world. So let us pray. Providing God, 
Please accept the gifts we give back to you. Bless them, multiply them, and give to us your wisdom to use your resources wisely, helping to bring the kingdom of God to earth today. Amen. As we prepare to hear the sermon and the scripture readings, let us bow for this prayer of illumination. Mighty God, our strength and hope, you have not left us on our own struggling to find you without direction. Rather, you have come among us, scattered as we may be. And in the scriptures of the synagogue and the church, you have given us the reliable record of your presence. Open us anew to the meaning of what we read, that by the gifts of your Holy Spirit, we may be strengthened and sent forth to do your work in the world through Christ, who is the living word. Amen. Our scripture readings this morning for this morning's sermon come from both the Old and the New Testament. The first piece is from 1 Samuel 15, verse 34 through 16, verse, chapter 16, verse 13. It is the message of David's selection as the king by God, king of Israel by God. And I'm reading from the message translation this morning. Samuel left immediately for Ramah, and Saul went home to Jabriah. Samuel had done had nothing to do with Samuel from then on, though he grieved long and deeply over him. But God was sorry he had ever made Saul king in the first place. God addressed Samuel. So how long are you going to mope over Saul? You know, I've rejected him as king over Israel. Fill your flask with anointing oil and get going. I'm sending you to Bethlehem, to the house, or to have contact with Jesse of Bethlehem. I've spotted the very king I want among his sons. I can't do that, says Samuel. Saul will hear about it and kill me. God said, take a heifer with you and announce, I've come to lead you in the worship of God with this heifer as a sacrifice. Make sure Jesse gets invited. I'll let you know what to do next. I'll point out the one you are to anoint. Saul did what God told him. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the town fathers greeted him, but apprehensively. Is there something wrong, they asked. Nothing's wrong, Samuel replied. I've come to sacrifice this heifer and lead you in the worship of God. Prepare yourselves, be consecrated and join me in worship. He made sure Jesse and his sons were also consecrated and called to the worship. When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Elab and thought, here he is, God's anointed. But God told Samuel, looks aren't everything. Don't be impressed with his looks and stature. I've already eliminated him. God judges persons differently than humans do. Men and women look at the face. God looks into the heart. Or as the New Revised Standard Version says of that phrase, God doesn't look at things like humans do. Humans only see what is visible to the eyes, but the Lord sees into the heart. Jesse then called up Abinadab and presented him to Samuel. And Samuel said, this man isn't God's choice either. And next, Jesse presented Shammah, and Samuel said, No, this man isn't either. Jesse presented his seven sons to Samuel. Samuel was blunt with Jesse. God hasn't chosen any of these. And then he asked Jesse, Is this it? Are there no more sons? Well, Jesse replied, Yes. There's the brunt, 
but he's out tending the sheep. Samuel ordered Jesse, go get him. We're not moving from the spot until he is here. Jesse sent for him. He was brought in, the very picture of health, bright eyes, good looking. And God said to Samuel, get up on your feet, anoint him. This is the one. Samuel took his flask of oil and anointed him with his brothers standing around watching. The Spirit of God entered David like a rush of wind. God finally empowered and vitally empowering him for the rest of his life. Samuel left and went home to Ramah. Our second scripture reading comes from the New Testament, the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 32 through 34. Uh, for this reading, I'm using the New Revised Standard Version. God has, uh, Jesus has been presenting a series of parables to the people for the purpose of helping them to understand what was meant by the kingdom of God. He, Jesus, also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all the shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. May God add his blessing to the reading and the understanding of his word. God judges persons differently than humans do. Men and women look at the face. God looks into the heart. Or as the New Revised Standard Version writes it, God doesn't look at things like humans do. Humans see only what is visible to the eyes, but the Lord sees into the heart. As with most scriptures, there are many different lessons or ideas on which we could focus for a sermon at any given time. As I was preparing for this particular sermon this morning, reading the first Samuel selection, my attention was continually drawn back to God's words to Samuel as Samuel wondered why, why one after another of Jesse's sons were being passed over. David's story, being the last, the youngest, well, as his daddy called him, the runt, fits in with so many stories of persons who came both before and after David in the scriptures. God seems to pick the one others think God would not, should not, pick. He often picks the one least expected, the one who on the surface does not look the part. Think of the stories of Jacob over Esau or Moses, of Ruth the Maabite, the Maon, an ancestor of David, and therefore Jesus. Mary, Jesus' mother, and Peter the impetuous. Paul, a persecutor of those who followed Jesus the Christ. The world has a habit of looking at people, seeing only what is visible to the eyes, without considering the heart of the person or the hearts of the people. And we all too often allow ourselves to be manipulated by their images of us and others. And when that happens, we in the world may miss out on a special someone who is called by God to bring about the kingdom, bring the kingdom of God to earth, just as each time we pray the Lord's Prayer, we ask God to do. When we allow this to happen to ourselves, or to others, but particularly ourselves, we miss out on an opportunity to answer God's call to serve, to serve God and or our neighbor. 
Our Mark reading talks about the kingdom of God. In fact, Jesus is trying to find a way to explain or describe the kingdom. This parable is part of a series of parables about the kingdom, as I indicated earlier. Jesus compares God's kingdom to a mustard seed. But we need to note that Jesus is not talking about our faith here. Jesus is not talking about us. He is talking about the kingdom of God. This small seed is planted, and we do not understand how, but out of this very small seed comes a sprout that grows into a shrub. This shrub becomes the largest of all shrubs where the birds of the air can build nests. The kingdom of God is unique. Part we can see, or is here now, even if we don't understand how. Part is yet to come. Jesus said of himself, the kingdom is near. Further on in Mark, in chapter 12, verses 28 through 34, we are told the story of an interaction between Jesus and a scribe. Now, scribes, as you know, generally speaking, and Jesus were not on the same side, so to speak. They did not see eye to eye. So this encounter is right away different. The scribe has no hidden agenda. He is not out to get Jesus. He's not out to trick him or to give just one more reason to the religious authorities to want to have Jesus killed. This scribe has heard some previous interactions of Jesus's and just wants to have a one-on-one -on -one sit down to talk theology. He asked Jesus what commandment is the first of all. Jesus shares. The first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandments greater than these. You are right, teacher, the scribe responded. You have truly said that he is one, and beside him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, and with all the strength. And to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw but the scribe answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. Jesus shared. The scribe listened. The scribe responded. They saw eye to eye, and they appreciated each other. We need to note, however, that the scribe does not say, or the scripture does not say, that the scribe then becomes a follower of Jesus. Still, Jesus tells him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. I think something very important is modeled here. There is story after story of conflict between Jesus and the religious authorities. In these stories of conflict, there is no real listening, sharing, or using the mind to grow in the understanding of God. There is a lot of plotting, trying to create a gotcha moment on the part of the religious authorities as they're trying to build their case against a threat to their authority. There's a lot of the feeling of being right, their being in control, of deciding and telling the people what they must do and who to believe and who they must listen to or not listen to. Who has the answers? Who really is connected with God? Jesus came to do a new thing. If we listen, we'll learn. Put into practice loving the Lord our God with our heart, soul, mind, which Jesus added and all our strength, then we will fulfill these two commandments. The kingdom of God comes near. We can experience it. 
We can see it. In my mind right now, I see the time during these past couple of weeks when the police and the peaceful protesters knelt, prayed, held hands, shared, listened, hugged each other. I don't know about you, but I felt the kingdom of God come near. How wonderful to live in an era through the magic of technology where we are able to witness with our own eyes, to hear with our own ears, and perhaps for just a moment, all of us get to see beyond the face and into the hearts of others. My prayer is that we can find ways to sustain these kingdom, kingdom moments so that they are less fleeting. My prayer is that we and the world will not miss out on a special someone called by God to help bring about the kingdom, the kingdom of God. My prayer is that God will help us see more as God sees, not the face, but the heart. Before I let you go, today is Father's Day. On TV, on our iPhones, in magazines, what have you. We are told of all kinds of things that Dad would just love to have for Father's Day. There's a survey done a couple of years ago. Dad said what they wanted more than anything else for Father's Day was to see their children. Now, socially distancing seeing is better than not seeing at all. Outside, perhaps, is healthier. But I can tell you from personal experience, when our daughter and granddaughter surprised us with a visit a couple of weeks ago, and we hadn't seen them in quite a while because of all this going on, I was so excited. It was the best thing that had happened to me in a month. And it truly lifted my spirits. And my daughter said it lifted theirs as well. Christian dads say in that same survey, what they want for Father's Day is to go to church with their children. Well, because of our love that we have, particularly for our older parents and older members of the church, we know it's not healthy for us to be here physically in this building today. But um, we can look forward to next year when we can truly celebrate um, being in the church together also. We don't have to wait till Father's Day, but we can look forward to when that day comes and we reach stage three and we can join together with our family here in God's house. But you know, it seems to me in our socially distanced visits or on Skype or Zoom or simply over the phone, there is no reason why we can't be like Jesus and the scribe. You know, sit down with our fathers or the men who have been like fathers to us and just talk theology. Listen, share, share our life faith experiences. Perhaps those experiences will be heard for the first time by the child or even by the parent. After all, we could all use a good dose of a kingdom moment right now, today. Happy Father's Day. Our closing hymn of the morning 
is leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Mm-hmm.